Welcome to the shortwave radio channel. So this is uh, Voice of America. Voice of America in French from Africa, uh, really. Um, I wanted to talk about the bandwidths available in our portable radios today. There was a time when, you know, radios had very specific bandwidths and they were locked into pretty much what we had or you had to purchase filters to add bandwidths. And so often we had, you know, on desktop receivers, uh, a couple of different bandwidths. We could add a couple more by purchasing some filters that we would have to install in the radios. Typical portable receivers, most of them, and a lot of them still today have typical narrow wide settings and now we have of course new generations of receivers that have specific bandwidths that you can choose which is really cool because it does help quite a lot and when do you use bandwidths how do you use them uh, that's probably a question that a lot of people are wondering how do i use the bandwidths typically Bandwidths are different for single sideband listening and AM listening for international broadcast bands. And the reason is an AM signal of an international broadcaster is larger on the shortwave bands than a single sideband signal, which is much narrower and takes less space, which means you also don't need as much bandwidth um, on the receiver itself. And the reason for this to have bandwidth is to avoid interference mostly. So when you look at a radio like this Texan H501X, when I press the bandwidth button, I get offered six kilohertz, five kilohertz, 3.5 and 2.3 kilohertz on international broadcast band. So now you might think, okay, well, which one do I choose? That answer is dependent on what you're listening to and what's available if there's any uh, stations close to the frequency. The wider the bandwidth, so the bigger the number, the more audio you get out of the signal. So you'll have higher fidelity because a six kilohertz bandwidth filter will let through more audio frequencies. And in cases like here, when there's music, that makes a difference even for voice it might make a difference and typically you will often leave it um, large enough for good audio fidelity but i do not recommend that you leave it at the widest that's available and the reason why look at the effect of having the widest filter here now i'll use the six kilohertz filter we'll use radio marty and I'll fine tune one kilohertz. Look at how far I can still listen to the station. I'm five kilohertz away and you still hear it. And that means you risk having a error. And I see this often on the shortwave group and in the comments section of my channel um, where people will say, hey, I'm hearing Spanish on 11935. In reality, this signal is on 11.930. So how do you avoid these mistakes of, you know, having the wrong frequency? Narrow your bandwidth. So here I'm going to use 5 or 3.5. And you see that it now is more distorted. Because to get it right, I need to really tune the exact frequency of 11.930. So that's one reason you don't want to have it too wide. But you don't want to have it too narrow also because signals will be more muffled. There's less information. Won't necessarily sound as good. Another reason why you might want to have it narrow is if there's a station nearby. It can happen that a station is only 5 kilohertz up or down the frequency. And then it interferes with the signal you're trying to hear. By narrowing the bandwidth, you will actually avoid the interference that is next to this frequency at the same time. In single sideband, so for example, if we go on the uh, amateur band, let's go on 40 meter amateur band here and lower sideband. 
you will have, of course, an encounter ham radio operators. Um, let's hope that something is there to listen to right now. I don't see a lot of activity on 40 meters as we speak. Something there. Or we could try the 20 meter band. On upper side band just for demonstration purposes. Bands are really quiet. Here we go. We got a station here. The bandwidths on single sideband are smaller. So that means that if I look at the bandwidths, uh, the highest the highest bandwidth that I've got here will be four kilohertz in single sideband. But I can narrow it to three, 2.3, up to 0.5. You notice that the audio has changed depending on which filter I'm using. What will be the optimal filter, bandwidth filter for single sideband? Once again, it will depend on what you're listening to. Standard amateur radio listening, you'll choose something like 2.3 or 3. That'll give you the fidelity for the audio. And the reason why also single sideband filters are smaller there's no music there's you know of course pirate stations might have music that's when you might want to use the four kilohertz one but we'll typically keep it at three or 2.3 to avoid as much interference on each side but still have good audio fidelity now you might say but why is it that they're giving us 1.2 or even 0.5 where we don't even hear the voice that's because for certain types of signals that is a good idea. A 0.5 or a 1.2 might be a good idea for Morse code, for example. Let's go down the 20 meter band. I'm sure there's going to be some Morse code somewhere. There we go. Now, there's a signal. There's a lot of noise around it. I can narrow this to 0.5. I can pinpoint the signal a lot more and have a better idea where it is actually on the frequency. It avoids more of the interference that's around it, pinpoints the audio, and for example, if you're decoding Morse code or trying to decode with software, the fact that this is more focused on the frequency of the Morse code can help in decoding Morse code signals. Last but not least, if you do listen to um, digital signals and want to have the maximum out of digital signals, for example, say we go on FT8 frequency here. Now this, let's tune around to here. If you're going to tune digital signals, I recommend you use at least, at least three kilohertz at least. And the reason why I will say tune to three kilohertz bandwidth is because the amount of signal, the amount of information in the audio of digital modes often goes beyond just, um, you know, a few kilo, a few uh, hundred hertz and sometimes is bigger. For example, if you're trying to decode weather facts, you might want to have as much information as possible. So 3 kilohertz typically is what we choose for a lot of uh, digital modes, including FT8, where there's a lot of stations that could be a kilohertz, 2 kilohertz away in their tone. So you need to make sure that you don't miss out on anything. Actually, decoding FT8 is a great example. If you do decode FT8, what you'll notice is that if you narrow the bandwidth, the software will also have less results every time that you are tuning stations. Because too narrow of a bandwidth, you're missing out on some that are outside the range of the receive. So hope it's not too complex, but it's a little bit of an explanation of bandwidths and when to use them, how to use them on receivers. If you have any questions, of course, you can ask in the description below in the, uh, the comments below. If you like my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.